About a month ago, my family took our yearly weekend trip to the island nearby, and while we were there, I had the opportunity to go jetty fishing. And at said jetty, while looking in between the rocks for bait and usable things, I saw what I thought looked like a sea slater, or wharf roach, which I'd previously thought only lived in California. But before I could catch it, that one ran in between some rocks and was gone. They, they move way faster than any isopod I'd ever encountered in the past. But after determining that it's now or never, I decided to spend the rest of the jetty fishing time hunting for them. But with only an hour left till closing time, because jetties close for some reason, that's a thing, I flipped every single rock I could, almost fell into the gigantic waves on multiple instances, tore my only net for the trip before realizing that I could catch them with my hands much easier. But it was worth it, because after an hour, I had collected a whole four of some of the most interesting but notoriously difficult to keep intertidal isopods that there are. My goal with these isopods was to breed them past the second generation, which, to my knowledge, hasn't been done and recorded so far. But by the time I got home, I had already lost one of the isopods to an unknown cause. And with only three left, there's a 12% chance that they're all male or all female. And if that was the case, then I wouldn't be able to get any captive breeding, period. I had already planned to make a paludarium that mimics the high and low tides that these would experience in the wild. And without a viable way to tell male from female, I would need to see babies before I could even start gathering my supplies to build said paludarium. And then, I had my answer. Two weeks later. No way. Baby sea slaters.